uh, to announce the launch of the uh, white paper on AI in agri-tech. I must confess I'm not a subject matter expert, but it's sheer karmic coincidence, call it if you want, that I'm here in the Garden City representing the Garden State of New Jersey. And it is but also natural that being here in the state of Karnataka, supposedly the most innovative state of the country, I also represent New Jersey, which boasts itself as the state of innovation. So bringing together both innovation and agriculture, let me take this opportunity to invite on stage my panelists for this evening, Ms. Anju Kadian, Regional Director for Government and Industry Affairs, Corteva AgriScience. She comes with a wide experience starting from Rolls-Royce to AstraZeneca and now to Corteva. So you can count on her to talk about policy, government matters, not only in India but in Asia. Anju, may I please welcome you on stage? And a second panelist for the evening, he brings a much longer experience, starting with a domestic Biggie, Mahindra and Mahindra. He went up the value chain up to John Deere, where he spent the last quarter of a century promoting them in India. Mukul Varshni, may I please welcome you on stage? of this evening, I'm going to put a question to you, Mukul, if I may. You know, in New Jersey, which I'm representing, one of the biggest expense in farming is labor, the cost of labor. In India, it is just the opposite. So my question in three parts, if I may, is do you think to achieve economic viability in the application of AI to agriculture, Scale is an inherent requirement. B, considering the diversity of farm sizes and economic conditions in India, how can AI be effectively used to benefit both smallholder and large-scale farmers? And the last component, how do we ensure AI leads to inclusive growth and does not create exclusive advantages that amplify existing or create new inequalities? Over to you. So thank you, sir. Thank you. Nice question. First of all, a very um, good evening to everyone in Bangalore. Um, I've stayed in this city for four years, so I just love this place. And you're fortunate to live here. It's definitely a garden city. And we're just waiting for someone to water. Maybe it's going to rain tonight. So we're looking at the waters as well. Um, see, uh, you talked about uh, labor scarcity and labor cost. And I take both the things together. Uh, today, labor cost definitely is lower as compared to other countries or other parts of the world. But labor scarcity has begun in India. Uh, now, labor scarcity, when I say when you need them, you don't get them. So that's scarcity, you know, the, at the time of harvest, at the time of sowing, and that's where technology is needed. Now you have three questions and I'll bundle them into one answer, if uh, you may permit me to do so. Now technology definitely um, reduces the cost as it gets scalable over a period of time. You know, several years ago, uh, you all, and I can see one young boy, Sudanchu, Sudanchu right? Shantanu, who I met on the plane, uh, he must have been a baby when cell phones were introduced in India. The cost of each call, the cost of cell phone, it was huge. Today, we are the largest smartphone users in the world, which means as the technology has um, unfolded itself, the cost has come down, accessibility has increased. Now, what is the biggest advantage of having technology in a sector like AI? You know, today, when you have technology, you have connectivity. And when you have connectivity, you have transparency, 
and traceability. Now, this is what distinguishes uh, or the biggest value of the technology is to bring connectivity, transparency, and traceability. Now, as that comes in, there will not be a particular individual or an organization that gets benefited. You have rights, players, every across the value chain. You have technology which will benefit everyone. I'll give you another example, and I was talking to Ms. Anuja a little while ago. We were talking of uh, ethanol in India. Now, ethanol in India is a need, but it's also a big challenge to produce so much of corn or have that extra sugar or starch that can produce. They came out with a technology which is not GM, but it actually helps farmers produce three times more. So as this technology comes in, it will have value and each and every stakeholder will get benefit out of it rather than one or two people. I want to keep that brief. It's a big topic, but um, with, with, given that we just have 20 minutes, I want to limit myself as of this moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mukul. Now, my next question or set of questions is to you, Anuja. Uh, let's talk about, a little about climate consideration, environment. Uh, in India, we are very dependent on the monsoon for agriculture. Now, keeping this in mind, in what ways can AI contribute to addressing environmental challenges in India, such as water scarcity and soil degradation? How can AI be leveraged to make Indian agriculture more resilient to climate change? And how can, how can AI solutions be customized to address the local needs of farmers in different regions of India using different crops and climates? Thanks, Ashwin. I think today everyone is talking about climate change and the 1.5 degree kind of mandate is uh, the world is unable to meet it. What we really need is a path-breaking technology and AI plays a huge role there. And the first in those is, for example, we have Genolytics, which is our advanced breeding platform that helps bring the technologies like uh, Sir just mentioned to bring it to market very quickly. We can just reduce the time in which these latest technologies can be introduced to the farmer. Similarly, when we talk about the crop protection product, the Gen AI platform, and particularly for the smaller molecules, we have noted that uh, we, can uh, we, we can reduce the uh, effort by up to 10 raised to power 52 to broaden the search for the molecules that are going to have low tox impact, but at the same time have a very, very niche impact on the farmers. So the MRLs are maintained, the soil degradation doesn't happen, the extra water consumption doesn't happen, and uh, you know, uh, so basically a more sustainable agriculture practice. Uh, what, what we really need to do, so this is more to do with agriculture, but where the actual dividend of AI comes is from the, with reference to making Indian farmers more resilient to climate change. So the weather uh, mapping softwares, the crop insurance that comes out of that, the predictive analysis, this can ensure that the farming stays a net zero game if not a positive one. Because if it, does, if it goes into the negative, the amplifying impact is so huge that we are not going to get any growers. So just apart from agriculture, we also need to ensure that there are farmers to do that agriculture. And, uh, and AI plays a very crucial role over there as well. Thank you, Anuja. Back to you, Mukul. Um, let's, we are here at the Bangalore Tech Summit to talk about innovation and trends. So let's discuss future innovation and trends. What emerging AI technologies or innovations hold significant promise for Indian agriculture, say, over the next decade? And how do you envision partnerships involving between local tech, local tech startups, international companies like yours, Indian research institutions, Bangalore is full of them, and the government to drive AI advancement in agriculture. So I'll start it a little differently. You know, there was a time where uh, hard work was revenue. 
you know, hard work was revenue. Then came a time where industrialization became revenue. And then came a time where smart work became a revenue. But today, data is a revenue. And if you are data-driven, data analytics, you are actually um, hitting the topic of revenue very, very well. And that is what is needed. Now, you talked about innovation. Now, before that innovation, I just want to touch on the subject of the purpose. You know, why are we here today? We are here because we really want to bring everything that is happening in the space of defense, in the space of pharma, in the space of uh, services. We want to bring it in agriculture, and that's why we are here. So we have a larger purpose, and we really have to, when the purpose is large, there will be collaborations from academia, there will be collaborations from startups, there will be collaborations from companies like John Deere, Corteva, there will be collaborations from US and India, which we are actually working on. So this will become a very natural way forward. It will, cannot be done exclusively by anyone. Having said that, uh, there will be challenges, especially in the sector of agriculture where farm land holding is smaller and we have seen technologies in large scale farm operations. This will need three things. Uh, as per my understanding, one, the government policy and the government reforms need to be very, very rock solid. We talked about green revolution, which happened when I was a little baby. Uh, and then we all have been talking about the next green revolution. Never, ever it has happened. But today, as I see the scope and the willingness of the government, there is an X stack. There is a startup culture, the academias have the right money, there is innovation, US-India relationship is at a threshold where a lot of, uh, you know, things can happen between the two countries. The challenge here is speed. Now, there are bottlenecks at the government end because the government policy sometimes becomes very inward looking, sometimes very protective and I think that's a challenge where people like us will have to go to the government and tell them what is needed if we really want a breakthrough innovation to happen in this space. Two, lack of skill sets. Willingness is there, but the right skills are not there. How does academia, the government, the policy bring all these things together to enable this environment? You can see a lot of skill sets in several other sectors as compared to agriculture. agriculture. Now, I am one person and I think like me, there will be many who would know the farmers, chote chote farmers ke paas aap log jate rahe honge. Is it okay if I speak a little bit of Hindi? I love to do that in between. So, uh, kisanon ke bachon se kabha ki aap mile hain. So, kisanon ke bachche hamesha ye bolenge ki agar technology driven agriculture hai, to we love to stay in agriculture. You know, they don't want ki kudali, bell and all that goes to this. So there is interest, there is aspiration. We have, as a company, introduced a technology which is smart connector. Now I'll give you one example. We tried this about six years ago with a woman farmer very close to uh, Maharashtra where our factory is. And we brought their skills to a level where they can ride the tractor, operate the tractor as any skilled tractor operator would do. Once they did it, we gave them a technology which is called telematics, which actually enabled them to see what they are doing every single minute on their smartphone. Now, this is what we call a kind of a step towards AI. Now, these women today have not only scaled the number of operations they do, but there are 10 different women who have actually got together. They are selling seeds, they are selling fertilizers, they have become a kind of a agronomy manager for the village. Now just see the transformation that is happening. Now this is possible only when academia, industry, government regulations, everything put together comes in, starts up come, startups come together. Alone can John Deere do it? No. We can bring technology. We need seeds, we need chemicals, we need fertilizers. We need skill sets. 
So there'll be startups, there'll be academia, and it will become a rock solid value chain when we can really bring that transformation which helps productivity, which helps achieve food security for the country, and also helps transform the lives of the people who are involved in it. To your first question, technology, does it benefit anyone? No, it will benefit everyone, everyone. and transformation will happen at every single stage. Thank you. Thank you. Anuja, uh, Mukul just spoke about government policy needed. So I'm going to ask you with your background dealing with government affairs, uh, what strategies could be implemented to help balance the present technological advancement with traditional methods of farming in India, like you said, the Kudali to the smartphone? And what initiatives or policies are needed to ensure that the economic benefits, again what he mentioned, of AI in agriculture reach all segments of the farming community in India? Thanks, Ashwin. Government is doing a lot in the country. Uh, is it sufficient? Probably not. But it's not because government is not doing a lot, it's more because of the complexity of the problem. The kind of uh, pressure on resources that we have in the country that amplifies that complexities. Uh, you know, when, uh, when the drones regulation came out for CP, for, for the agrochemical spraying, our government was very quick to grant the licenses and come up with a very, very uh, evolving and supportive government policies. Similarly, with the digital stacks, the kind of work that is happening in the digital stacks is amazing. Then there are other government entities that's right now consolidating a lot of digital islands of data that uh, data islands and which are very isolated and which are being uh, which which are being controlled by different entities. So there might be Corteva as one, there might be John Deere as another one, there might be the multilateral agencies, state governments, everyone has that record, but those records or that data does not talk to each other. So government is right now through digital stacks and through NABARD and through RPI is trying to work on that comprehensive data set and the data set management so that we can utilize this data for a very effective decision making. So that's that's one. The secondly, when we talk about the economic benefits of AI, what we really need is innovative business models. Right now, if we look at it, the startup community for a lot of time is dependent upon the multilateral funding or the CSR funding or very, very small business or the active user uh, generated revenue is there. So we have to find that model, whether it's going to be a freemium kind of model or whether it's going to be where the infrastructure is being set up by, by some kind of multi-stakeholder partnership while the user pays for it because any technology, if it's only dependent upon charity or one-time funding, it's not sustainable. And we don't want that our farmers are unable to use those technologies in a very sustained manner. If we can resolve these problems, or rather these gaps, then there is a lot that AI can do. It will go from the drones for chemical spraying to, it will go to the uh, integrated pesticide management precision sewing, and there are going to be the lot of different partners who will come together to do it. We need to create that kind of cohesive ecosystem where the trust is there. Agriculture is one sector where I feel that the trust is somewhere missing. Everyone talks about that, what is, in the, what is it there for them to support something like that? Uh, and, and we need to look at it more from a positive angle rather than finding the gaps in it. Unless we tackle that, a lot of these things are just going to stay in this room and we are going to discuss it, but nothing is going to move on the ground. Actually, now a rider to both of you, based on what you just said. Do you think going into the future, there might be an over-dependency on AI? Will it affect our methods of farming, number one? And when you just spoke about data, and even Mukul mentioned it, today we are data driven. What happens when someone has that control of the data? Uh, you know, issues related to data privacy, GDPR, things like that. How would you address such things going to the future? I leave the questions to both of you. If there is a purpose, I don't think there'll be an, uh, but you know, that can happen. 
there are some movies that are there there are some books that are there how technology how ai how data control can lead to uh um, uh disaster also lekin uh, this can happen more in the space of uh, maybe defense cyber security mera ko aisa lagta hai ab kisan bechara garib aadmi hai hum sab lage hue hain ki hamari humko roz achhi dal roti sabzi mile acche ingredients mile jisse hum pasta bhi banaye pizza bhi banaye burger bhi banaye aur tarah tarah ke khana bhi khaye सो so, ऐसी नीयत में शायद संभावना कम है कि एनी बडी वुड लाइक टू मिस यूज दैट यू नो वी टॉक अबाउट टेक्नोलॉजी एंड एवरी थिंग विच इज ऑन वन वे लेकिन वेन आई सेट द पर्पज एंड इट रिमाइंड्स मी ऑफ ए सॉन्ग दैट राज कपूर्स फिल्म वॉज देयर कि किसी की मुस्कुराहटों पर हो निसार किसी का दर्द मिल सके तो ले उधार किसी के वास्ते तेरे दिल में हो प्यार तो जीना इसी का नाम है तो मैं समझता हूं कि एग्रीकल्चर में हम पर्पस अलग रखते हैं मकसद अलग रखते हैं कोलेब्रेशन की बात अलग करते हैं शेयर अलग तरीके से करते हैं एंड दिस इज जस्ट बिकॉज वी ट्रूली बिलीव दैट वी विल नॉट कंट्रोल द डाटा इट इज बेनिफिटिंग एवरीवन एंड जीना इसी का नाम है थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू आई थिंक विद दिस आई एन this part of the conversation we are driven by time constraints i'm sorry uh not being able to take any questions unless there's something really okay one question go ahead if there is collaboration we are looking for <laughs> so <laughs> so it's not a question basically it's a coincidence that we got into this session uh, we are a tech company uh, we have built uh, an application for uh, it's called agri app and it got, it has got more than 1 million downloads it is for farmers so it has got everything it's a multi vendor system it has got uh, how to build you know, the, the different plantations scales fertilizers uh, in the soil testing it's purely for farmers and that is doing pretty good so i'm happy that you know i am able to contribute into this session and what you're planning on the next stage is machine learning and how to detect diseases you know taking a photo of the leaf and then try to find out uh, what caused it and and the solution for that so this is what it is so uh, just to share i think uh, he brings a very important point about images and things like that and i think uh, dr barse when we go to the government one of the request and the reforms should be the geo special policy which should actually and i think jay uh, works very closely with us it should have a level playing field for every single player uh, who is playing in india currently it distinguishes and it brings some kind of a discrimination and technology will have a limitation in agriculture if that is not um, well solved so thanks gentlemen for bringing that and i will just meet you and see how we can collaborate in the future sure sure thank you thank you very much and i thank the usibc for hosting this please look at this again it's the ai in agriculture white paper i'm sure you can reach out to usbc should you want to receive a copy thank you ashwin we would now like a moderator to present the mementos to all our panelists